millions of Americans need money right now to simply put food on the table, the other side of this. But some Republican members of Congress are arguing relief checks will be spent on other things. Here is Congressman Kevin Brady, the top Republican on the House Ways and Means Committee. Will this stimulate our local economies? Not a lot. What we know is that much of this extra $1,600 will go to pay down credit card debt or savings or even make new purchases online at Walmart, Best Buy, or Amazon. Joining me now is Diane Swank. She is the chief economist at Grant Thornton. So, um, Diane, thanks for being here with us. Uh, will you respond to, to Kevin Brady? Is he right? Is he wrong? Well, there's no question that stimulus checks that go to a broad group of people are not as stimulating to the U.S. economy as it would be to help those who are most in need. But that said, we know that many people, the $600 checks and the $300 per week is not going to pay the rent that they already owe. Many of them already owe over $5,000 in debt. So it really isn't a fair comparison at this stage of the game, given what we let lapse and how many families are literally running on fumes at this point in time, not able to feed their family for a week or to pay their mortgage or their rent. And I think that's very important. The other issue is that what we're looking for and the other side of this is for the saving that we have to be on the pent up demand to be unleashed by drawing down that saving. If you don't have any saving, that leaves only the wealthiest of households to unleash their pent up demand. And as we know, when they spend, that doesn't mean that, you know, the rolling coming incoming tide lifts all boats. Well, let's talk about this money going to households that maybe don't need to put food on the table, but could potentially use it uh, to go out and shop at, at their local stores or even shop on Amazon. H how effective is that in, in keeping the economy afloat? How effective was that in helping in the third quarter of this year, which did a little bit better than people were expecting? It was no question. It was very effective even in May and June as we reopened a little early. But the um, money that we had from stimulus checks and from that extra supplemental payments on unemployment insurance helped to unleash the economy. And we saw much stronger gains in employment. We saw much stronger gains in consumer spending. And then as we got into the third quarter, when unemployment insurance lapsed, the people that saved that money did it for a very good reason to support the necessities of food and rent. And we already know that, you know, the unemployment benefits are limited this time around and will likely not cover everyone into what is going to be, although a, a sharp expansion once we reopen more fully, we don't know how much we'll really regain what we've gotten. And you've already noted in your earlier piece about restaurants, you know, for people to feel comfortable to go out and really make a restaurant profitable, they've got to have peak load capacity Thursday through Sunday. And it's the bar yeah. tabs that make them money. That's not going to be there. There, and we're leaving scars in this economy by those businesses that have failed and households that are going under. And we just don't know how deeply the complexion of the economy will be scarred. So what we'll recognize on the other side. So from an economic standpoint, um, how necessary or is it necessary to, to pass this $2,000 increase in the direct stimulus relief? Well, frankly, at this stage of the game, I say go ahead and do it because these families need it so much. And yes, it's not exactly targeted as unemployment insurance is. But I think at this stage of the game, given where we're at and people are so far behind on their bills, it would be a much needed lift to get them whole again or at least partially whole again. And we really need to do that. That said, you know, would I prefer that Congress, you can't take your eye off the ball. We're, this only gets us halfway there. We're about two trillion short. Yeah. So it's a one trillion is a down payment. But the other side of this is funding state and local governments. And without that, we know from 2008, 2009, that can be an extraordinary headwind. So my fear is that we'll sort of ride as we unleash pent up demand and think that's it. And that won't be it. We've not, we've learned the hard way that a rising tide does not lift all boats and that there are people who are really going to be hit hard by this crisis for a longer period of time. I know there's worried about the national debt, but there there's worry about it. But there didn't seem to be that worry when we were talking about uh, corporate tax cuts. Diane Swank, thank you so much for joining us and helping us understand. We appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.